while there are a lot of similarities between the monocot and dicot stem layers, they have differences as well. Let's observe the internal structure of the monocot stem of the maize plant to know more about the differences. Green plants are crucial contributors to the growth of all living forms. Here we observe a maize plant, a member of the class monocotyledons of the angiosperms. The plant consists of aerial shoot encompassing stem and photosynthetic leaves with parallel veins. Ever thought how this plant undergoes the vital process of growth? To seek an answer to this query, we shift our attention to an underground system of fibrous roots which anchor the plant to the soil. These fine roots facilitate the plant to sop up water molecules from the soil. These water molecules as important raw materials for photosynthesis are transported from the roots through internal pipelines of specialized transporting tubes, the xylem. In the transfer section of stem, we observe lying parallel to the xylem is the phloem pipe. A minute gaze at the transfer section of a maize stem unfolds the sequence of specific layers of tissues exposing the internal structure of a monocot stem. A thin, rigid lining of cuticle is present surrounding the epidermis. The epidermis consists of compactly arranged, thin-walled parenchyma cells. Inner to the epidermal layer is the hypodermis, which is made of two or three layers of sclerenchyma cells, providing mechanical strength to the stem. Next is the ground tissue layer. It is made up of thin-walled parenchyma cells which extends up to the center of the stem. The vascular bundles are irregularly scattered in the ground tissue. The smaller sized vascular bundles are more in number and are found at the peripheral region. On the other hand, the large bundles are less in number and more towards the center. The cambium tissue being absent, the vascular bundle is termed, closed, conjoint and collateral. Each vascular bundle is bounded by a sclerenchymatous bundle sheath. The arrangement of the xylem is in a Y shape. The metaxylem is evident in the form of two big vessels with pitted thickenings and the protoxylem is a smaller vessel with spiral thickening. On the inner side of a protoxylem is a water-containing cavity known as lysigenous cavity, which is formed by disintegration of some protoxylem vessels. The protoxylem is surrounded by tracheids and xylem parenchyma. To summarize, in the transverse section of a monocot stem, we observe a thin, rigid lining of cuticle is present surrounding the epidermis. The epidermis consists of compactly arranged, thin-walled parenchyma cells. Inner to the epidermal layer is the hypodermis. Next is the ground tissue layer. It is made up of thin-walled parenchyma cells which extends up to the center of the stem. The vascular bundles are irregularly scattered in the ground tissue. The smaller sized vascular bundles are more in number and are found at the peripheral region. On the other hand, the large bundles are less in number and are more towards the center. Each vascular bundle is bounded by a sclerenchymatous bundle sheath. The arrangement of the xylem is in a Y shape. On the inner side of a protoxylem is a water-containing cavity known as 
the lysigenous cavity. The protoxylum is surrounded by tracheids and xylem parenchyma. Next to the xylem, we find the phloem. Ah, we now know how dicot and monocot stems differ. Do you think that's all? What about the structure that grows out of stems? Yes, leaves. The internal structure of the leaves of monocots and dicots also differ from each other. Learn more about this in our upcoming videos and stay tuned.